Have you ever wandered down the aisles of your favorite pet food store, confused about which dry dog kibble would suit your big white beast? In today's episode, we're going to teach you how to evaluate dry dog food with our easy step-by-step guide for your Dogo Argentino dog. Welcome to Dogo Argentino USA, the channel where we talk Dogo. I'm your host, Nicole. What is kibble? If you've never heard the term, you may be wondering what exactly is kibble? Great question. Kibble is dry dog food that is formed from various pulverized ingredients fed into an extruder that squeezes out pellets under high pressure to be cooked into a convenient shelf-stable nugget. History. Kibble was invented in 1860 by Englishman James Spratt and marketed to the wealthy gentleman under the guise of better quality nutrition for his prized show dogs. Dog shows and dog kibble were intertwined from the start. At the time, kibble was very expensive and only the affluent could afford it, for it cost as much as 7 to $8 per 100 pounds, at a time when the wealthy middle class family earned between $1,000 and $1,200 per year. Here we see a historic label, showing what is labeled as an Alsatian wolf dog, which is today known as the German Shepherd Dog. Charles Crufts, founder of the iconic Crufts Dog Show, was responsible for much of the early dog portraiture used in marketing. The new dog food at dog shows for the Spratt operation prior to leaving on good terms for his own business concerns. What are the pros of dog kibble? Well, of course, it's easy to feed and widely available. It's easy to travel with. It's convenient. It's easy to use as a training bait. It's certainly shelf-stable and easy to store. It's low mess. There's endless variety in brands to choose from. Easy to customize based on lifestyle and age. It's simple to understand. There is a wide range of price points to fit budget from dirt cheap to investment grade. And there is a relatively low risk of parasites and bacteria in the preparation or handling. But of course, nothing is perfect. What are some of the cons? Some brands of dog food are nutritionally dead and empty, thus not truly useful as food. It is extremely difficult to evaluate effectively. Misleading package with pictures and claims that are little better than marketing lies are commonplace. Recalls aren't uncommon due to manufacturing error and manufacturing contamination. Not as strictly regulated in the United States as Europe, the AAFCO, the Association of American Feed Control Officials, and the FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration, both oversee dog food. Some people believe that cereal-based kibbles cause bloat, allergies, and inflammatory conditions in lard breeds like the Dogo Argentino. Poor quality brands can contain excess dyes, preservatives, fillers, additives, processing agents, as well as being made from diseased dead animal parts. And of course, it can attract parasites like bugs, weevils, and mice, which in turn can contaminate the food as well as the location it's stored in. How to evaluate labels and ingredients. First, let's talk about ingredients, and then once we get through that, we're going to give you a more objective method to grade a particular dry dog food. Let's talk about the ingredients and what to look for when you pick up that beautifully marketed bag of dog kibble. Okay, first, don't be influenced by the artwork on the label. Having a picture of a beautiful animal, huge cuts of luscious raw meat, and bountiful produce does not mean anything meaningful in terms of what percentage those ingredients are in the mix. For example, you could put a pile of blueberries on the label, and as long as it's present in the ingredients, no matter how small the amount, it is not considered false advertising. The pet food industry does extensive psychological studies regarding label imagery, colors, fonts, kibble size, kibble color, kibble shapes, all designed to influence the consumer. Many words are included specifically to appeal to a pet owner that have no scientific meaning, like, quote, human-grade meats, which has no specific meaning. Flip that pretty dog food bag on its back and let's look at the label. Number one, you want to look at the protein level, often called crude protein, and you're looking for that percentage to be 30% or higher. 
Number two, look at the first five ingredients which should tell you where the protein comes from. Things like lamb, venison, salmon, or meals made of these things are ideal. Named protein is key, meaning lamb meal as opposed to meat meal, which could be from any meat product. Healthy fats would include things like omega-3, omega-6. Beneficial trace ingredients include fruits like blueberries, which contain antioxidants, and some ingredients for fiber, such as barley or oats. Some other good ingredients include flaxseed for fat and fiber, glucosamine for joint health, chicory root for prebiotics, as well as probiotics and enzymes for digestion. If these ingredients are listed after a long list of vitamins, minerals, or fillers, remember they are present in very small amounts. Number four, look for some of the bad guy ingredients. Ingredients to avoid include artificial preservatives or colors, polypropylene glycol, benzoates, nitrates, sulfates, caramel colors, cellulose, ethyl oxyquin, glycerol monosterate, BHA, BHT, PBDE. Okay, so let's look a little closer at some of those other things, like polypromistin diphenyl ethers, which is PBDE. This is an ingredient that's found in flame retardant and is probably not ideal to be used in dog food, but this item allows for easier extrusion and thus is often included. Aflatoxins. These are a mold that causes cancer in wheat and corn either before it is used in the ingredients to make the dog food or after. Heterocyclic amines are a cancer-causing agent that appear as a result of cooking both fish and meat. Acrylamides, a carcinogen due to the high temperatures applied to cooking vegetables. And you want to avoid fillers like corn, rice, soybean, sorghum, and wheat, which are all incredibly carbohydrate-rich. They interfere with insulin and glucose levels, which in turn can influence the metabolism and cause obesity. Remember that any ingredient that is listed after salt in the label is a trace ingredient because salt is highly toxic to dogs and can only be used in 1% or less of the total food. Corn meals and wheat meals are not necessarily harmful unless your dog is allergic to them, but they are low quality fillers. So what is a meal? Whether it's bone meal, lamb meal, or corn meal, meal simply means that the item has been dehydrated and is concentrated and has less moisture, which again helps the extrusion process of dog kibble. You would like to avoid any generic vegetable oil along with soybean oil, sunflower oil, or sapphire oil. Avoid beef fat or beef towel because these are all low quality ingredients. And you specifically want to avoid things that are just labeled generically, such as vegetable oil versus telling you the specific oil. The more generic the label, the more that particular formula can actually vary. And they're not telling you a lie. If they just tell you vegetable oil. Well, if this week soybean oil is cheap and they put it in, that's fine because they've labeled it vegetable oil. But next week it might be sunflower oil. Again, they're not lying because it's a type of vegetable oil. But in terms of tracking down a food-based allergy, when they use generic terms, it's very hard to tell if that food is going to cause an allergy in your animal. Of course, you want to avoid any terms of animal digest or animal rendered or rendering, which can include both spoiled human meat, roadkill, diseased animals, rats, animals that are dead prior to slaughter, such as an animal that has either died of cancer or an animal that has been euthanized, which will have that deadly chemical in the presence of the meat. Fish meal is not ideal because that is generally made from ground dried fish cuttings and that can be rotten. Of course, liver meal is not specifically the best if it's not specifying what type of liver, like beef liver. Again, that's tough to track down things when you have allergies with your dog. Flavor or flavoring is, of course, an additive and definitely not something you want. Fructose is a sweetener. Again, that can add to obesity. Bone and meat meals that are not specific can be sourced from diseased animals. 
mineral oil is a stool softener that they often will add to dog food because they've used so many binding agents in order to aid the extrusion process that it would cause constipation in the dog. So they add the mineral oil to soften the stool to hide the fact that the ingredients are quite low in quality. Anything that is labeled gallic acid, propyl gallate, or propyl ester, these have been linked to cancer and liver disease. Any cereal, husk or hull, is a junk carb. So corn bran is actually the hull of the corn. Corn cellulose, oat hulls, peanut hulls, rice hulls, soybean mill run, wheat mill run, wheat middlings. These are all poor fiber sources that can be uh, put in dog foods, and they can include actually floor sweepings, the mill or press cleanout debris, And because you're getting the exterior part of that grain, you're actually having the highest level of pesticides applied to the grain in that part of the food. Anything that is a fruit or vegetable pumice or pulp is going to be extremely high in pesticides. So if it's labeled as an example tomato pumice or tomato pulp, you're going to have a higher amount of pesticides, seeds, twigs, and leaves, many of which are going to be very, very high also in certain poisonous chemicals such as arsenic. Okay, so you want to really avoid vague labels like meat protein or chicken byproduct. Anything that's meat protein is not telling you where it's from. Again, that can be very difficult if you have allergies. And anything that is labeled byproduct, whether it's chicken or lamb or anything else, that's the junk part of the animal. So that can include skin, feathers, beaks, tails, heads, and it can also come from diseased, dead, or rejected animals that are unfit for human consumption. So byproduct means literally it's been produced as an extra in the human food production, and that's generally a low-quality protein source. You want to avoid dyes like blue number two, red number 40, yellow number five, which have been connected to brain tumors and allergies. Anything like bone phosphate, which they use to balance calcium, can be extracted from bones using lye, acids, and caustic agents, which can remain in trace amounts in the dog food. If you are looking at brewer's rice or ground brewer's rice, those are low quality rice sources. And of course, cane molasses, corn syrup, sorbitol, sugar are unneeded because they're sweeteners. And because they are sweeteners, the sugar amount is high and can lead to tooth decay, nervousness, diabetes, obesity, allergies, and arthritis. DDGS, which is corn distillers dried grains, they're, they're, um, they get those from corn that's been fermented with ethyl alcohol And the problem with that is that the nutritional value of that is extremely inconsistent. It just goes up and down. And if you see anything that's called menadione, that is synthetic vitamin K, which is an inexpensive substitute for uh, regular vitamin K, and it's been linked to liver problems and anemia. And please note, We've recently discovered that high levels of peas, legumes, and potatoes are linked to dilated cardiomyopathy, which is a type of heart disease. And this has been found in many major brands, including Zignature, Taste of the Wild, For Health, Earthborn Holistic, Blue Buffalo, Nature's Domain, Merrick, From, California Natural, Natural Balance, Origin, Nature's Variety, Nutrisource, Nutro, and Rachel Ray's Nutrish. Okay, so we've talked about ingredients. Let's go on to a method for evaluating dog kibble because once you know what to look at and you're trying to figure out what is going to be a good way to evaluate two similar ones, we're going to start with a little bit of a paper bag test. Take a particular food and start with 100 points. Number one, subtract 10 points for every byproduct listed. Number two, subtract 10 points for any non-specificity like poultry meat versus chicken meat or meat versus venison. Number three, subtract 10 for any BHT, 
BHA or ethyoxyquin. These are all uh, preservatives. Number four, subtract five for anything listed as mill run grain, grain husks, grain hulls, or non-specific grain. All of these are low quality carbs. Number five, subtract five for double listings like rice flour or ground brown rice. Again, you're just stuffing the formula with lower quality ingredients. Number six, subtract three if the top three ingredients contain a non-specific animal protein, such as poultry versus chicken. Subtract three points for dyes. Number eight, subtract three if ground corn or ground wheat is processed and present. Subtract two if corn is in the top five ingredients. Subtract two for animal fat other than specific fat like salmon oil. Subtract two if lamb is the only animal protein unless your dog has allergies. Subtract two if there's soy or soybeans present. Subtract one if there is salt, particularly if it's listed more than once. Then you're going to add, add five points if the meat says it's organic. Add five points if the food is endorsed by a major breed group like the Dogo Argentino Club of America. Add five points if the food is baked and not extruded because the extrusion process requires a lot of additional ingredients to make the machine itself work. Add three if the food contains probiotics. Add three if fruit is contained. If the food contains vegetables that aren't corn or wheat, add three. If the animal sources are hormone or antibiotic free, add two. If the food contains barley, add two. If the food contains flaxseed oil, add two. If the food contains specific animal proteins other than the first ingredient and not counting double ingredient proteins like chicken and then listing again chicken meal, add one point. If glucosamine or chondroitin is present, you want to add one. Those are great for joints. And if they say the vegetables are tested to be pesticide free, add one point. Okay, so just like in school, an A grade would be between 90 and 100 points, a B grade, 80 to 89 points, a C grade, 70 to 79 points, a D grade, 60 to 69 points, and a failing grade of F would be anything below 59. Understanding serving size. Dog food labels are required to list the kilocalories on the label per serving, which is abbreviated by the term KCAL. Just think of it as calories. And from a scientific standpoint, calories are actually the amount of heat required to heat water one degree. And this is how we measure energy. Most dog food bags are going to have general guidelines as to how much to serve based on body weight. And unfortunately, this does not account for the activity level or the life cycle of the Dogo Argentino dog. So when is a cup not a cup? When that cup is a drinking vessel, a Tupperware container, or similar. You need an actual dedicated measuring device to avoid habitually under or overfeeding the animal. If you want to be truly precise, measuring through a food weighing scale is far more precise than a dry ingredient measuring cup because kibbles can have different food densities. Assessing the dog, the activity level, the age, and the reproductive status all affects serving size. For example, a dogo puppy under 12 months a pregnant dogo, a lactating bitch, or a highly active hog hunting dogo argentino are going to have so much higher nutrient needs than an older, less active house dog. And so the guidelines on the label are very much a generalization. If you have specific questions about serving size, take a picture of the label on your phone and its nutritional content and take that to your vet and ask for his or her specific recommendations. So a KCAL in a cup of dried food is going to vary quite a lot. A more nutritious food may or may not have more calories. Because remember, higher calories can be from excessive carbs and not necessarily better ingredients. For example, a food with a 30% minimum protein may have a different moisture level, a different fiber level, and different calories per cup. So how are you going to compare sizings based on KCALs? Pro tip, 
First, select the nutrient you want to compare and find the guaranteed analysis percentage, which is required to be on the label. Two, next find the calorie density defined as the kcal per kilogram. And then you're going to, number three, do the calculation, which would be dividing the percentage by calorie density and then multiply by a thousand. So for example, if you have 25% protein, and as an example, there's 3,606 kcals per kilogram, multiply times a thousand, and that gives you 6.9 grams of protein per 100 kcal. Understanding serving cost. Once you understand how to derive how many grams of protein per 100 kcal in a brand of food, you can compare the cost effectively to derive the true serving cost. Of course, the guidelines are loose based on size, weight, and activity level of the Dogo Argentino dog. A large breed such as the Dogo that's an active six-month-old pup, let's say that pup is 70 pounds, he or she is going to need 1,740 daily calories of intake in terms of food. So if you know from our previous pro tip that there's 3,606 kcals per kilogram, you can take the cost of the food per bag. Let's say for this example, it's a higher quality food and it's, let's just call it $54.99 per bag, American US dollars, and the bag contains 23 pounds. Then you can do the calculation to determine the cost per 100 kilocalories, which is 7 cents per 100 kilocalories. Okay, that's a lot of math. If you don't like math, I totally feel you. I don't like math either. You can make use of a handy online calculator, which is located at uh, V-E-T-N-U-T-R-I-T-I-O-N dot Tufts, T-U-F-T-S dot edu, E-D-U. And that will do the calculation for you to determine your daily, monthly, and yearly feeding costs without a complicated uh, mathematical equation. So let's talk about signs and symptoms of food allergies. So if you notice that your dogs have dry, itchy skin, they have excessive scratching and licking, they have bald patches, they have hot spots, they're getting ear infections a lot, they're getting skin infections, they have diarrhea, they have vomiting, all of these can be symptoms of food allergies. And a lot of times the way a food allergy works is it builds up over time. It's not always an immediate problem like you're going to discover it the day you give it the food or the day after you give it the food. And the reason is, is the body becomes fatigued by processing something that does not agree with the system over time and you start to see these other problems manifest. So you can actually have a phenomenal food allergy that you don't know until a month or two down the line when you've been feeding a particular food or a year. And that makes it really, really hard to figure out what the problem is, whether it's food related or something else. And that's one of the reasons I highly object to vague label um, ingredients like meat protein, which doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't help you track down that food allergy. I hope this video gave you insight on food so that you can make an evaluation about different dry dog foods if you want to feed dry to your Dogo Argentino dog. And I will be the first person to say that I fed uh, dry food to my dogs exclusively for many years as a child. I do think that you can safely feed dry dog food, but I do think that the dry dog food pet industry tries to make it misleading for consumers based on what in the advertising world would be called puffery, meaning they heavily lean on pictures on words that don't have any meaning as far as the FDA is concerned. And I think that's one of the reasons it can be very difficult to dive into the meat and bones, haha, I made a joke, of dry dog food because they don't really want you to know. And that's the reason they dress up a lot of terms to make it sound better than it really is. As an example, if they are saying things like apple pumice, you are thinking, oh my gosh, I'm giving my dog apples. But you're not. What you're giving them is leaves and twigs and skin and sticks. And that's not what you want to feed your dog. You know, apple pumice is completely different than apple. So I think that they purposely use a lot of terms to mislead people. And 
I think that they're just mainly concerned with the money. I really don't think they're concerned with animal health at all because so many of the ingredients that are put in dog foods that are dry are based on helping the extruding machine which creates dry dog food to work better. That's just my opinion. But even aside from that, I do think that there are plenty of ingredients that are good, that are healthy, and if you want to go that way, I do think that you're going to have to dig a little, but there's certainly nothing wrong with doing a little research into the foods that you're considering feeding your dog on a daily basis. So as you guys know, we're a super small channel. Dogo Argentinos as an interest are incredibly rare. And if you want to help us out and you thought that we added value to your life or gave you some insights that are going to make your life with your Dogo Argentino dog easier, I would love it if I could earn a like, a comment, if you would share, if you would subscribe, if you would let other people know about our channel, if you have a membership to a Dogo Argentino group on Facebook or elsewhere, because we just want to be helpful and provide a positive community for Dogo Argentinos and because they're just awesome. So we would love that. So don't forget to uh, give us a little help there if you feel we earned it, because it really does help. It, it basically makes the algorithm suggest our channel to other interested parties, and that's really the only way that small channels survive over time. Don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications so that you are informed every time we create a new educational video about Dogo Argentino dogs. And as always, have a Dogo-tastic day. Thanks for listening.